My name is Abhilasha Sood and I am here today to share about my life journey. Originally from Himachal, my parents moved around a lot in search of new opportunities and a better place to raise a family. A first born to my parents in Chennai, staying in a school for more than 3 to 4 years was long enough. But that is what shaped me into the young woman that I am today. Inclusivity and diversity are concepts ingrained in me. Growing up, I was a very slow learner. In fact, I still work extra hard for channeling that hindrance into a positive to achieve my goals. When I was a child, my parents had almost given up on me becoming a good student. But just as when that was going to happen, I participated in an elocution competition and recited a beautiful poem perfectly. My parents were shocked and that's when my mom took up the challenge to make me into a good student despite my issues in comprehension. I studied every day for 8 hours after school with her. As a result, I persevered and became a good student but had no other interests. All my time went solely into keeping up with my academics. Sounds like a familiar story in your India. Having said that, I was never my teacher's favourite. Obviously because I was not naturally smart. Hard work and putting in that extra effort defines me. Life was moving on but nothing really excited me, nothing really changed and a standstill at the age of 14 was not what I wanted in my life. Then came the most happening and exciting moment of my life and life changing to say the least. Our family's move to Africa was shocking to me. Growing up as an introverted, tedious, timid and shy girl, it was daunting to say the least. I was worried for an acute fear of judgement from a crowd so foreign to me. Would I be able to talk to them? Would I be able to fit in? Would I be able to even just try to blend in with the kind of people that I was going to meet? These were the th one of the thousands of questions that consumed me feeding up to my departure. Initially, we moved to Kenya and I faced the biggest culture shock of my life. I couldn't understand English as well as the other students and teachers then. I didn't dress like them, I couldn't even understand their accents and so I isolated myself. I remember sitting alone in the library eating my lunch food and thought of myself as one of those nerdy girls in those Indian movies. But I wasn't that smart either. So nothing really defined me, you can say. Nothing really changed in my life. And I slowly became sad and lonely. Then my father got an opportunity to move to Tanzania instead, a neighbouring country to Kenya. Seeing as how our entire family was facing the same culture shock and was slowly becoming sad, he took up that opportunity and that opportunity re-energized me. I remember my flight to Tanzania was the most important in my life. Sitting in that plane thinking about what was to come ahead was also scary. But I remember that just as my environment, my mindset had to change. The looking at it, rather than looking at the situation as an inconvenience, I had to look at it like an opportunity. To the people I would meet, my personality was a blank canvas and the paintbrush was in my hands. With this brand new intent, I consciously steered clear of thoughts that were once deterring me from trying something new. In my school, I had over 60 other different nationalities and I couldn't bear but to think that everybody here once must have been feeling the same way as I did and so I had to fake my confidence until I actually make it. I tried different interests of mine that I had been harboring since school but never really got the opportunity to do so in India. I went into public relations, event management and debating and I became into a completely new person. As days passed by, I became a person who never really stood back from risks and challenges and always took advantage of endless opportunities. I even wanted to be the talkative in one in the group. Sounds funny, right? And then came the opportunity that would change my life forever. The trek to Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain peak in Africa. The new me jumped at the opportunity to travel and trek to this historic mountain. I remember the nine months of preparation that I had with 20 others like me. Many of them were sporty, had better stamina and all in all a better chance of making it at the top. I remember talking to myself and thinking that this is a confirmation that I would never make it and even questioning myself 
Why am I even doing this? Then came the starting point of our journey. I remember that on some midnight, my friends one by one were being sent back to the camp. And I remember that their causes were simply loss of will, exhaustion, or just, you know, they didn't want to try hard enough. That could have demotivated me even further. I could have thought to myself that if they didn't make it, how can I? In fact, they were the most sportier and had better stamina. But I remember my dad's last words to me before my journey had started. If you don't believe in yourself, you're definitely not going to make it. So I took one step at a time, fainted on a rock, fell in the snow, but at 7.30 a.m. on 4th May 2017, I reached to Guru Peak. That was life changing. This six day trek taught me more about commitment, perseverance and team building than anything else in my life. And I was able to reflect all of that when I was given the responsibility to show the new kids around my new school. I remember my journey when I first joined my school in Tanzania. I was shy and timid and had no confidence. I was worried about being bullied as the nerdy Indian girl and I was worried that everybody would never ever look past my hindrances in comprehension and would only care about my academics but that was not the case. It dawned on me that throughout the course of this journey I got this unwavering confidence and the ability to move past my hindrances. I delved into various different activities and that has now become an intrinsic part of my personality. And with that came my new motto in life. I cannot control what others think of me, but that should never stop me from doing what I want. Because that is only going to act as another hindrance for my yet new exciting life as a new person. In university, I delved into many other activities. Continuing debating event management and also in my college festival. It was scary, first half. But I remembered my journey in Africa and this was nothing in front of that. With new pursuits come new challenges. But you know what? The payoff might just be worth it. I, and I think it was, I came back to India, I joined a new school, made new friends and continued my experiences and interests. I first became a member and then eventually the head of department for public relations in my college festival. Public relations, my passion. And it might seem like a small role to you, but handling my own 30 member team and working directly with 600 students of my junior batch was, would have been scary for a girl like me earlier. But now, it was not a joke, but it was somehow more easy going. Eventually, I found Girl Power Talk. An accident, but the most memorable and happiest accident of my life. I remember feeling like an outsider my entire life. I thought I would yet have to work extra hard to fit in, but nobody made me feel like it. I, my work was shabby, my mistakes might have been unforgivable in other circumstances, but here, with so many smart, beautiful souls mentoring me each day, it was not long enough before I got my own department to handle public relations itself. And that is what makes Girl Power Talk so special. The fact that I'm sitting here today, being able to reflect on my life journey here in front of all of you on the company's official social media account speaks volumes in itself. Girl Power Talk does not care about the age, your experience or the hindrances that you think you've kept with yourself before you join. They only care about the person you will become. They help you to grow personally and professionally and give you a family that you will not get anywhere else. So if you're like me, unsure, maybe shy, maybe timid, but also wanting to do so many things with your life, Girl Power Talk is your place. So I hope to see your application soon and become a part of my family. Thank you. Girl